Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of First and Last. I said that really fast. Yeah. I'm impressed. My name is Josh, and with me this week, I only have Joe. Hey, man. It's just me. Yeah. <laughs> Sign off if you like Jimmy, but stay <laughs> yeah. if you like fun. Um, it is the second week of the first and last summer camp mm-hmm. where we live or relive childhood i was gonna say childhood dreams yeah kind but you were like but about like, to say trauma too trauma <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it was trauma drama or dreams it was childhood reality yeah. uh shows that we watched i did have a question about that in like for like the theme of summer camp is it specifically it's not just childhood shows it's childhood shows from our childhood yeah uh i mean that's kind of how it worked last time right like I yeah. picked I picked a tra- the Transformers that I watched. Mm-hmm. Jimmy picked the X Men that he watched. Yeah, and I yeah, and I picked Alex Mack, which is like a little bit of an older kid show. Yeah. But did you go off the rails this week? No, no, and that well because I signed up for a free trial of Paramount Plus, I was able to get the exact show that I wanted. Okay, but when I was considering not signing up for that free trial, I was like, well, should I just pick this other like? random nickelodeon show that's some part of some zoomers childhood <laughs> oh no i don't think we need to do that I, yeah. I i thought maybe if anything you would pick like a show that was kind of escaped you as a child that you were kind of interested in i guess there's also maybe that, you yeah. could never get home from school in time or yeah. something i feel like i know our audience and like it's more millennial than zoomer and like they don't want to hear about like Sam and Cat or whatever is on Nickelodeon now. I don't know what that is or what that means. So <laughs> scrolling through. I think it's Ariana, Ariana Grande. I think I think that's oh, her. She was like a Disney kid or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but before we get to that, Joe, what is first and last for the uninitiated who just like summer camps and came and were like, okay. <laughs> just like, I'm here for it. Uh, it's a TV pod where specifically we take a show and watch only the first episode and only the last episode. Nothing in between. Um, so it really benefits for shows that like evolve over time and have like a specific beginning and end. Um, so if you're suggesting shows, try not to suggest shows that either had like a season or are just like don't have an overarching theme and just like just episodes. I mean, we uh, we, we watched Fear Factor. Yeah, and, we did. Uh... But those are still, you could still. There's a difference between the beginning and end of Fear Factor. This is true. (laughs) This is true. I did go back and watch the WWE Fear Factor one after we watched Fear Factor. And I guess all of Jersey Shore. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there's like, if you could describe like 2002 in one phrase, like WWE superstars on Fear Factor is probably a good way to start. probably it right there, yeah. (laughs) And like TRLs playing in the background or something yeah, like that. If you're a zoomer and you want to understand what we went through. <laughs> Play hacky sack with Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> yeah. It's more late nineties, I guess, but whatever. Okay. Well, um, it's your show. You got to pick. I picked Spider-Man last week, which is a great pick. I mean, like Fox kids, Saturday morning cartoon. I feel like that's a very big chunk of like, you take that and you take pogs. You've got your, like eight-year-old Joe starter kit. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my my eight-year-old starter <laughs> kit too. I'm slightly, um, old, I'm a couple years older, so maybe my ten-year-old starter kit. I guess. Yeah. So as per tradition, I wanted to pick a show that was uh, live action as opposed to cartoon, mm. and maybe a little bit older targeted as opposed to like single-digit kids. Um, and, and then also uh, cable as opposed to network television. Did you go Nickelodeon again then? Yes. Yes. I went Nickelodeon kind of in the same vein of like Alex Mack. I immediately went to like salute your shorts. Ooh, salute your shorts was like my favorite Nickelodeon show. Uh huh. Um, but I just didn't pick it cause only we had like one and a half seasons. Oh, but... it did. I didn't even know. I didn't know that. I just remember, uh, I, uh, I, I'm sure I probably even told this story mm-hmm. when we had summer camp last time, but it was, uh, uh, it was on during the in the afternoon. It was like salute your shorts and a, uh, hey dude. Yeah, I was gonna say probably hey dude and, and stuff That's like that. that and I I was like the older kid in in a 
in day the care. Day camp, yeah. So I didn't ha- so I didn't have to go I didn't have to take a nap. <laughs> so I just got to hang out in the in the basement yeah. of this lady's house and watch the like Nickelodeon in the afternoon <laughs> like live action kid shows. <laughs> it's just like a weird little dip in your life where like you're too old and too young for naps. I feel like it's like between the ages of like 10 and maybe 15, you're like, I don't need naps anymore. But then once you're older than that, you're like, man, I could really use a nap. Yeah. When you're older, you're like, oh man, naps are great. What was <laughs> <Yeah>. I doing? <laughs> but like, I mean, yeah, college kids sometimes, I mean, you take naps in college because you were up till five. Yeah. Well, I made the mistake my freshman year of going like, man, I have the freedom to schedule my classes and, like, that's just how I dictate my day. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, shit. And, like, I'm only taking, like, four hours of class per day because that's just, like... That's how college works. Yeah, like, yeah. you end up doing more work outside of, like, class and stuff. Yeah. But, so, I scheduled all of my classes from 8 a.m. to noon every day oh, for God. my first semester because I was just like, this is great. I'll be done with school at noon and I'll just have the rest of the day to myself. Hell yeah. And then you found out how much goes on at night in college. <laughs> yeah. Well, and just that, like, I never want to be up at 8 a.m. and, like, going to class. So it's just like, no. what I would do is, like, if I show up at class at 8 a.m., I'm going to show up. Uh, maybe be okay for that 8 a.m. class because I'm like hyped for the day. But then those like 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. classes, I'm for sure asleep. Like I remember this just like rem- I remember sitting, trying to sit in the front of the lecture hall to like force myself to be awake, but mm-hmm. I would just sleep. I uh, I benefited from my college. Yours is in the Midwest as well, but mm-hmm. I benefited uh, from the fact that all of our buildings were connected via skyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we never had to go outside. Okay. So that meant when you have a like early January or like late December or, you know, like right before Christmas break type, like it's winter and it's hell outside. Yeah. And, but you were up too late. You just get up still in like your pajamas, basically mm-hmm. you're slightly like cleaned up and then you just shuffle your way to class never having to even walk outside at all and mm-hmm. deal with it and so people just came to class and they're like i'm here that's all you've asked for me to do yeah. that's a weird window of like i care enough to go to this class but i also like don't care enough to like it would depend on it would depend on teacher a teacher might say like you have to come like you have an attendance mm-hmm. scenario and some teachers were like well i mean if you don't come then you just won't know what's going on yeah. and screw you kind of thing my yeah, mine was a weird thing where like my heart was in it. It was like I really should be here for this like lab lecture and really like try to learn about the things before I go to lab. But young, then, fr- young freshman Joe was yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. But then when I'm there, I'm just like, no, I'm sleepy. Oh my god, why did I do it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're well, just gonna turn on the overhead and talk. I'm I'm asleep. <laughs> uh, is there or that five minutes when you get there and for some reason the teacher isn't there yet and you're like yeah, and the whole class goes. How long do we have to wait until we get to not have class today? <laughs> well, and these are like, these are big lectures too. Cause you're like freshmen. Mm-hmm. And so like the professor is just like, like looking at me going like this kid's going to fall asleep in the front row. Then like, fuck him. I'm not even going to like try to wake <laughs> him up or anything. Like if he wants to just sleep through this class, that's fine. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I, I have much more important shit to deal with than some freshman who doesn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Uh, so I don't, I don't, I mean, we, Anyways, we, got, out, we got off base a little bit there, but, uh, what show did you oh, pick? Yeah, we didn't even talk about the show. No. Oh man. Um, so I did pick Hey Dude. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> hey Dude. Yeah. This, I can't wait to hear this theme song hit. Uh, so Hey Dude is, let me see if I can remember it correctly. It is, uh, the kids show and they're on like a dude ranch. Mm-hmm. Right. In like the Southwest. In the Southwest. I don't think I know why there's a bunch of like kids around. Mm -hmm. Is it a summer camp scenario? No, I think the idea is it is summer, but it's like it's a resort and these like these teenagers just like work there as their summer job. Okay. So they're like 15 to 18 maybe Mm -hmm. kind of thing and they're hanging out. I remember they're. Yeah. Yeah. I think they all work there and like they like you know take the tourists on like horse rides and like lifeguard the pool and stuff like that man i'm trying i'm i'm get, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm when i'm thinking I'm like am i me- am i mixing the stick stickly shows up <laughs> 
I can't remember. Uh, what did it run? Do you you got some deets for me? Um, yeah. So it ran from uh, July 14, 1989 to August 30, 1991, which is like you probably remember watching that show though in more like 1994. Yeah. Just because like with yeah, these there's Nickelodeon, no way I watched it when I, in 89. Yeah. yeah. With these Nickelodeon shows, they just like they had the original airing and then they just like kept airing these over and over again over the summers. Wait, so according to what I'm seeing, you saying it, it went for four two se- two years, but it went for five seasons? Yeah, exactly. So it just was on every day. For I think while. pretty much, yeah, and they just crammed in seasons per multiple seasons per year. It's the Power Rangers of Dude Ranches. Exactly, yeah. Well, and this I had watched a documentary on Nickelodeon, or like the early days of Nickelodeon recently. Um and I remember from that documentary that they said that like this is one of the first um, like original shows that they had produced for Nickelodeon. When they had first started, it was like they were just buying up cheap kid shows from other networks and showing it on Nickelodeon. Okay. Uh, but this is one of the first ones that they had specifically produced for Nickelodeon. Um, and it was just like the production values were like real low to start because it was just like fuck it we'll just like get these kids out in the desert and like film on location and like (laughs) so it was just like a million degrees and just like probably like illegal child labor laws like (laughs) child labor um like working conditions by today's standards or something but like they were just like hustling in like 1989 for this kids network um that's crazy um in my mind, I think I I don't know how this is even possible, but for some reason, I think I'm getting like my remembrance of like American Pie when they went to band camp that one time mm-hmm. mixed up also with <laughs> Hey Dude. Hey Dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, my memory works real good these <laughs> days, Joe. It's so. real good. Yeah. Yeah. It works real good. Um, oh. So, yeah. So they just like filmed on location at this actual resort in Arizona but they like built a few new buildings uh, to like be sets because like the actual resort is like a little bit more modern than what they wanted. Then they wanted it to look like a old West, like dude ranch. Okay. So it is filmed in the United, the United States of America. Yeah. yeah. As to opposed to what I would assume, like it's not like a, are you afraid of the dark or something where Maybe it's Canadian, like a Canadian yeah. show? <laughs> yeah, Cause yeah. that seems like what all those, these younger live action kids shows yeah, was were elsewhere. They were all Canadian shows. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. This was specifically produced for Nickelodeon before they had their studio set up in Orlando, Florida. So it's like produced on location in Arizona. Whereas like, like salute your shorts was early too. And it was produced on location in, uh, somewhere in California. Okay. But then later they started filming everything in, in Florida. So this is going to be a pretty rough first episode. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think production wise is going to be pretty rough. I think I can, I think it, I think I think I'm going to look fully through all of the rough and be like, <laughs> yeah. "Oh yeah." Well, especially if the uh the theme song in the first episode is mm-hmm. like what it's I the, yeah. remember mm-hmm. it being, mm-hmm. and I don't yeah, I just about as long as I hear "Hey dude," mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, "Yeah, teleport it back." Yeah, that's that's teleported back to the basement of my babysitter. Yeah, hopefully they they spent that budget on that early, and they're just like, we got to make sure this theme song hits. I hope they do, <laughs> and I hope it does. Um, I don't know if I have much more about it. I'm like, it's gonna be. Do you, do you remember any of the characters? Or none. None. Okay. Like, bu- bub. <laughs> no, I'm just bub. <laughs> 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 There's like an old guy that obviously like maybe he's not even that old, but he like owns the dude ranch thing yeah and mm-hmm. like i feel like there's a bunch of kids and they interact with him there's a bunch of kids i remember that um, is there a lady that like tends the horses probably yeah, i'm making probably that. some um, yeah. bunch of horse girls in this but one of them is um <laughs> whatchamacallit and i don't know if she's in the series from the beginning but she's ben stiller's wife and i don't remember her name now either. oh i don't know her name either she's a she's a sally sitwell in a yes mm-hmm. in a arrest development yeah sit well this is like kind of her first big thing um but i think that's the only like notable cast member you said ben stiller and we're talking about dude ranch and it's like summer camp and now you made me want to watch heavyweights Mm. which is one of the best ben stiller movies ever made like i'm definitely aware of that movie but i don't know that i've seen it all the way through yeah it's 
It's amazing. Well, should we just get we should just get into it, I think. Yeah, I'm good to go. Um because we can talk about all of the fun things we remember after the, after, the yeah. jogs. After we get these smelling salts and yeah. awaken it. Anybody that saw <laughs> it and went, hey, dude, you know, yeah. we all know what's going on. <laughs> and all you other people, you're going to have to wait about 25 seconds until we're done with this first episode. So we'll be back after the first one. It's called Day One at the Bar None. Ooh, all right. I like it. I like it. All right. We'll be back after that. And we're back. We're doing the first episode of Hey Dude. Hey. It was called Day One at the Bar None, and there's a one sentence write up, so I'm gonna I'll read it. Okay. We didn't we didn't decide. There's no Jimmy. <laughs> Should like have him phone in, like record his. Yeah, like, we'll we'll patch it in later. Yeah. Uh, the series premiere of Hey Dude introduced us to the show's characters: Ted, Danny, Brad, Lucy, Melody, Mister Ernst, and his accident prone son buddy oh and his accident of a son buddy <laughs> <laughs> i mean buddy did say he's like well i haven't hung out with my dad very much we didn't see him be accident prone in this episode right he didn't do anything accident prone and he's just talking about how he likes surprises he, he likes l- to do surprises he was i mean he was a little nerd but yeah. he wasn't accident prone. <laughs> that's about it okay uh I, I mean honestly really all this was was Day one, everyone mm-hmm. was returning. Uh, Ted, Melody, and Danny were right. all like returning counselor slash workers or yeah, whatever. You could tell that they knew each other. They're like they work at this ranch that's essentially resort. There's yeah. horses and shit. And I want to say counselor because I keep thinking it's like a kids camp, camp yeah. but it's not. <laughs> it's yeah. Ted got promoted to senior staff, which, which doesn't mean anything. Seems like it's meaningless. Mm-hmm. Danny, uh, I don't really know what he does. He's also maybe just staff, but like Melody is a lifeguard. She had said. Oh yeah, yeah. I wrote when I wrote Danny when I wrote the characters' names. I wrote Danny Dash Coolest One. <laughs> yeah, real chill dude. Yeah, real chill cool dude. <laughs> Ted's like a. Ted's like the kind of kid I wouldn't have wanted to be friends with, probably. Yeah. Except if forced to work with at a dude ranch <laughs> he's the the worst of teenagers where he's like really like he's really trying to impress and like trying to do too much yeah and who he's <laughs> definitely trying to impress is the new girl brad mm-hmm. yeah um who and, showed up in like a white limousine oh is that okay yeah <laughs> is she and then she was also wearing like I don't know what people in the late 80s would consider fashionable. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely like high fashion showing up at this dude ranch. So, of course, Ted thinks that she's like another guest. Yeah. Right. And the entire time is treating her like she's just like, well, he's like hitting on her the whole time. But aside from that, like he's also just like being like, oh, I'll show you what a real cowboy is like and like failing at everything. Except that Ted doesn't know what a real cowboy yeah. is like at all. <laughs> Yeah, and then it comes, He's the, the big whole thing about that is he tries to ride a horse to impress her, but it's like a, a, a one of the wild horses. Yeah, apparently they just have a wild horse at the, the ranch Which for guests. Which seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he, yeah, he tries to ride a wild horse, and then she's like, no, you're not going to do that. And then later on the episode, she's like, I can, I'll, I'm can. i the riding instructor. And then she just gets right up on it as yeah. if she did anything different you know yeah she just hopped on and they uh switched out a, horses and let her get there on. was a yeah there was this, like a slow-mo montage of this girl riding this horse and she had calmed it mm-hmm. oh, i mean i should have put this in my predictions and maybe you did but man ted got ted fell in or got like covered in a lot of different things <laughs> like he was cut, yeah, he, he fell in like the water trough twice mm-hmm uh he, he just rolled around in all the dirt and dust yeah so mm-hmm. he was dusty um, when he got kicked off the horse, he fell into what seemed to be like a horse poop pond or something. It had to be, yeah. I was trying to figure out whether it was poop or a pond, but it had to be a combination. It's just yeah. like the little like little pond where the horses poop. Yeah, it's like yeah, the horses <laughs> poop in the pond, and then it was the- brown and wet, but also very large, unlike a normal pile of horse shit. <laughs> yeah, it was odd. <laughs> Uh, and then at the end, all three of the kids, uh, Danny, Melody, and Brad, all sprayed him with a hose. Mm-hmm. So Ted had it. I mean, he deserved literally every single one of those. <laughs> yeah. He needs to be like put in his place for sure. He's yeah, yeah. Going to hurt himself with, with the way that he's acting. 
Oh, poor Ted, but not really. <laughs> uh, and then the other the other thing, honestly, is just that they never even talked about it, the old owner or whatever. But there was a new owner. His name's Mister Ernst. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And he's an accountant from New York who just bought the the ranch. Yeah. In Arizona, the real like, like Mister Ernst and his son Buddy are just like these city slickers that like don't know what life is like out in the West or something. That's the kind of vibe. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I mean, I think Buddy said at some point, he's like, yeah, my dad just kind of does stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, he just whatever. So it just sounds like Mr. Ernst is kind of like a like a, like a a miniature Mr. Magoo that has a lot of money that, like, yeah. just buys stuff. Because his whole thing was he was walking around because his feet hurt, mm-hmm. basically, because he was wearing cowboy boots and he's, like, never worn them before. <laughs> and that was it. And then, yeah, Buddy and... I don't know. Buddy was a terrible kid actor. Yeah. Yeah. Real bad. I had read, I think on the Wikipedia, I had read this, that he, like when Nickelodeon was in Arizona, they like wanted to cast some local kids for the show. Oh, okay. And like, so he had won like a casting call out of like all these like local Tucson kids. So, oh, like, he's, so like, he's literally an like, actor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see that. I mean, not that everybody else was like great actors yeah. by, by any means, but like it felt like up to the par of like okay kid actors. Yeah, yeah out. they're definitely kid actors for sure. Yeah, so that was whatever. But yeah, Buddy was like, I'm just saying words and staring off into space. I don't know <laughs> yeah. what's going on. He looked like he'd like never been in a play before or something. No, no, he was he was probably like, well, I don't can't do a play, mom. Yeah. That's dumb. <laughs> but yeah, Buddy's vibe is essentially just like. I don't really want to be here. I'm here with my dad who I don't even really know that well. And he like was talking to Melody about how he like essentially likes to like do pranks and stuff. And like he said, he likes to do surprises. And yeah, the, like the conversation he had with Brad about like what he's into mm-hmm. was like, I think if I had that conversation with a kid, I'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, what are you talking? What about? What are you talking about? <laughs> Because, yeah, he didn't say, like, oh, I like to pull pranks on people. He's like, I like to do surprises. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what does that mean? <laughs> and then, like, the surprise that they did was they pushed Ted into the watering hole yeah. trough. Sometimes you just got to shove Ted in the water. I mean, you know, and if it was anybody else, he'd be like, you guys are dicks. Yeah, yeah. If they, like, shoved Danny into the water, and be like, come on, man. He's come just, on. Danny's so cool. He was trying to help. <laughs> yeah. Danny was probably, like, trying to be your friend. <laughs> And Danny probably will still be your friend. Yeah. Because Danny's so cool. <laughs> ah, man. Uh, um, I mean, did it hit the nostalgia button? Did it work? Did you love it? I mean, uh, as soon as the theme song hit, because mm. we were talking about that theme song, and like they did have the theme song for like, the first episode. And it was just yippee like, ki yay Yeah, it's like a call and response. And like, man, that's a great intro. Yeah, <laughs> it is pretty sweet. Now I'm like, please don't get rid of it for the last episode. <laughs> yeah, it did hit. Um, I mean, I was talking about how I thought the production value would be pretty low. Um, I think the like the writing and stuff necessarily isn't bad, but just the um, there's like little like production things that like it seems like they're still trying to work out how to film on this like on location set in the middle of Arizona. Where it's just mm-hmm. like there's a lot of parts where like it's like too windy and I can't hear what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I thought, yeah, I definitely caught some audio issues every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, Oh, this sounds weird. And I think I even like, they were like inside mm-hmm. when they were in the dorms, like right away. I was like, why is it just, you forget the boom mic. What are you trying, yeah. to, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> or yeah, just weird stuff where it's like, there, there were some scenes inside where it just like look too bright. And I'm just like, and they haven't really quite feel, like, figured out like, how to light this more naturally I'm trying to make everything look like it's outside yeah no yeah. matter what <laughs> oh yeah did uh, mr ernst ever find his office i don't think so they one of the kids had mentioned because yeah mr ernst showed up and like he knows nothing about the ranch and like not even where his office is um and one of the kids had mentioned early on i thought that like mr ernst's office is like the only building with air conditioning <clears throat> that's what melody told him yeah mm-hmm. and i thought that there was going to be some sort of plot line where like the kids show Mr. Ernst this like closet or something that's, and they're like, this is your office. And like, they're like chilling in his actual office in the air conditioning oh, yeah, or yeah. something. Um, you know, they weren't yeah, mean to him by any means. They didn't like pull a prank on him or mm-hmm. anything, which 
I mean, why pull a prank on the like new buffoon like owner <laughs> yeah. when you've got a Ted? I guess. Yeah, yeah, you got a Ted. Yeah. Plus, like, if you can like this guy, I, I mean, Mister Ernst is kind of a lot like Ted too, where he like is out of his element and trying to impress. Like, you can use that to your advantage if you're a like cunning enough kid. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, you could just run this ranch and like get Mister Ernst to do whatever you want him to do. Yeah, I'm looking. So I'm sorry. I'm looking at the uh, air dates here. Mm-hmm. Season one and two just went straight every once a week, straight okay. through. Yeah, and then they took like a four, uh, like a three month break. Okay, and then they were taking breaks a little bit yeah. on that because I was wondering how sixty five episodes in two years for five seasons <laughs> happened. Interesting. Had to turn them out. They didn't really have any other shows. Yeah. I mean, all in all, let's be honest. If if you watched this at all when you were a kid, I think it was fun. Mm-hmm. There was definitely some, some slight issues. But I don't think it was any, like, worse. Maybe a little worse. But, like, not bl- glaringly much worse than, like, the first episode of, like, uh, um, um, Are You Afraid of the Dark or mm-hmm. anything. Like, yeah. I mean, those are so, those were pretty cheesy bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. and this is like trying to do a thing. I'm wondering if we're going to like, they're going to have like guests. I can't remember. Do they have like guest stars where it's like they interact with like Gerald, the like, you know, the guy visiting from Texas. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And stuff like, like really cause, interesting guests. Because obviously they're over the country or whatever. Yeah. Because obviously there should be guests, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't really remember. The show well enough. I really just remember, remember like these kids like hanging out with each other mm-hmm. and the theme song. <laughs> yeah, maybe the we'll find out. Song. I'll come when we get past the final episode. I'm like, <laughs> did I only like the theme song in this show? You just watch the first five minutes and then you're asleep, just napping. <laughs> I didn't take naps, Joe. <laughs> I was too old. <laughs> That's why I was awake watching these shows. I was too old and too young to take naps. <laughs> That's how it works. Uh, I mean, is there anything? What What else is there? Um, it was a pretty basic episode. It really. was pretty basic. I I wonder if they get more into it in the rest of the season. But it, at this point, it seems like Ted and Brad, the the like show off and the horse instructor, <laughs> um, or horse riding what instructor. Two, what, She's not instructing what, the horses. What two terrible uh, <laughs> titles? I'm Brad, the show off. <laughs> oh no! Sorry, I'm Ted, the show off, and I'm Brad, the horse instructor. The horse instructor. I teach the horses. I teach horses. Um, it seems like those are like the really the only two characters. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean? Danny's character is cool dude. Yeah, Danny, cool dude. Melody, cool chick. <laughs> uh, Buddy likes to do tricks. Yeah, and yeah, and Buddy and Mister Ernst are they're not so much characters so much as just like they're just people in a situation at this point. Like, yeah. And curious, they didn't even they didn't really use either one of those characters as like a regular device to like basically fill in, you know, the, yeah. you put the new people in, and then the audience learns when the new people learn. Yeah, right. But that's they weren't not, really part of. They it. were not yeah. used for that mm-hmm. at all. Yeah, they were just like side parts of whatever scene they were in. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, Buddy and Mister Ernst are there, and they have characteristics, but they're not really. They don't have personalities. They're I barely guess, people. Right? Yeah. yeah. They're just kid from New York who doesn't like being here. Guy who's out of his element. Yeah. But that's not a personality where it's like Ted, like you really get his personality where he's like very much like he's a little bit cocky and like his friends, Melody and Danny keep saying like, oh yeah, he's a good guy once you get to know him. But like we haven't really seen it yet. <laughs> they actually also specifically said, I think after Melody said that to Brad. Yeah. Brad was like, oh, yeah, what's, like, good about him? And she was like, <laughs> he's fine. He's a, he's yeah. a good guy. I promise he's a good guy. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I know that was kind of supposed to be a joke. Yeah. But also, I was like, oh, man, come on. <laughs> come up with one thing. That is very true, though, that, like, especially in high school, but maybe even beyond, too, that, like, you have a lot of friends that, like, you don't really like that much. You kind of rag on. And if someone were to ask you, like, what do you like about this person? Why are you friends? You'd be like, oh, yeah, I don't know. 
I think just, I, we just go way back, I guess. I think I pretty much officially don't have any of those people in my yeah, life. Yeah, not anymore. anymore. Yeah. yeah At this gone. point, you've weeded them out. But yeah, like, you're like, yeah, when I, when someone <laughs> said, what's good about them, I was like, I, and then I just, <laughs> I, I stopped hanging out with them. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, there's that, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll see if, um, you know, if by the end they have more filled out characters, but, um, but I don't know. I almost feel like a, with a kid's show, you don't really need like super dimensional characters for every character on the show. I don't need like, Mr. Ernst to really do anything more besides just not know what's going on yeah, because exactly. he's like, a. am a kid. I'm watching a show and he's like the only adult really. Mm-hmm. There was a lady named Lucy that showed up at oh, yeah, the end. I forgot about Lucy. But she was just kind of like, I ain't going to tell uh, Mr. Ernst about this. She seems like the one person who like knows what's like going on. Yeah. She seems like if anybody's going to be an authority figure at any point, yeah. it might be her. Mm-hmm. And and besides that, yeah, it's just like, oh, the other guy? Yeah, no, he's just a dumb adult because we're yeah. kids, so screw that guy. <laughs> um, And, you know, they probably use Buddy to drive, like, some silly plots maybe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that leads me to a prediction. Yeah? Yeah. Buddy, dead or gone by the last episode. Oh, you think they're just done with Buddy? I just don't. Why? <clears throat> on, like, based on his acting talent? Yeah, just based on, like, he doesn't need to be there. Um, okay. And 65 episodes later, I think they went, all right, you won season one. <laughs> yeah. But, like, you know, you didn't come back with Mr. Ernst in the next summer or whatever. Yeah. However, they're developed. At like, the beginning of them. every episode, they're just like, hey, where's Buddy? Like, oh, he's just off on a walk. Yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe he's on. there. Yeah, maybe <laughs> they act like he's there when he never is on camera. <laughs> yeah. All right, I can see that. Something like that. So that's my first one. Hey, I just talked to Buddy. He's going to take a nap for a while. He's not feeling well. Yeah, Buddy's too young. He takes naps still. <laughs> um, my second one is that Ted finally impresses Brad. Oh, good for him. Yeah. I was going to say that he finally like rides a horse, but <laughs> I went with I went with impresses Brad. Um, I think the two coolest kids on on the ranch are dating, aka Danny and Melody are oh, dating. Oh, interesting. Mhm. I wasn't sure that if they were going to do an actual like kid romance story. You know, I almost said Danny and Melody smooch, but no. I w- but I was like, I don't think there's going to be any kissing. Yeah. I think this is going to be not uh, interracial kissing. <laughs> <laughs> not in 1991 <laughs> or whenever. Yeah. Um, but I think those two are fun and I think they should they should get together. Yeah. But I also kind of feel like that's their vibe is like they're both cool. So nothing is going to go on with them. Right. <laughs> We're going to have to really pay attention for me to probably get any formal point mm. on that one. But <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then my last one, I think um, it's ending because Mr. Ernst is selling the ranch. Okay. I think I that's how they end it. it. Yeah. Man, do you think, I mean, do you think like the next owner, like, do you think he's selling the ranch and then all the kids are leaving because like the next owner sucks or something or. I don't know. I mean, I kind of just think maybe I think maybe it's just the end of summer and okay. potentially the ranch is like, oh, the, our season's over. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it is Arizona. So do they even have seasons? It's 100 degrees no matter what day it is. Right. Yeah. Well, like the kids got to go back to school. Yeah, or... yeah. So like their season's over. Yeah. And I just think it also just coincides with him selling it. Also, I mean, maybe they actually uh, like acknowledge that it's been two and a half years or whatever and these kids now probably slightly look older mm-hmm. like they've grown up and you're I like i was trying to like look up some ages and i can't find information about these actors no and that's the problem is they might look almost like, like the only thing that might change is the quality of the camera yeah. even what like for danny specifically like the, i think like danny could be 24 years old like yeah, in real life be. right yeah well like when i was like trying to look up stuff like about him after like there's a bunch of stuff on this website that was just like no one really knows what happened to Danny. Like at least all the other cast members, there've been like reunions and stuff and they've shown up, but like Like, no one's seen anything or like mentioned what happened to Danny. The mystery of Danny. Yeah. There's rumors that he like died. Oh no. Like no one really knows what happened to Danny past like 2004. Damn. If you would have told me Ted's Ted died, I'd be like, Oh, well, you know, (laughs) whatever. Oh, I hope Danny's fine. He vanished. No one knows. Now I'm going to do some research. (laughs) We're going to figure out what happened to Danny. He's probably just out there and like is trying hard to not be found. And Danny, just, like, if you're listening, you can hit us up at FNL Podcast, <laughs> and we want to know you're okay. <laughs> uh, insert your real name. I don't know what the actor's name is. <laughs> uh, I forget. It was something Torres. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
was it Jose Torres or was it Paul Torres? I don't remember. It could be one of those two or a third name. I did say. <laughs> uh, okay. What did you? What? What? What do you got? Um, I have. Uh, so Buddy is the kid from New York again. He uh, was wearing a Mets hat to show that he's from New York in this first episode. Yeah, of course. Well, that's how you figure it out. That's how you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's part of his character. And I think that Buddy still wears his Mets hat because I think that his character still isn't very filled out, and so he's just. He's just a hat. <laughs> okay, but if this so okay, well, but we just to clarify, we both will get a point if the skeleton of Buddy's wearing a Mets He's hat. Wearing a hat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just left it on the skeleton. Yeah, or in in memoriam. <laughs> this is how he would have wanted it. Yeah. Um. So and then Melody is a lifeguard. So I don't think necessarily by water, but I think somehow Melody saves a life. Okay. Um, well, she I probably think. knows uh, CPR and stuff, right? Yeah, kind of have to do. Mm-hmm. So. Um, I think that, uh, Mr. Ernst and Lucy, who I don't know, I don't necessarily know her job title, but it seems like she's maybe just like head of like ranch operations or something. Like, yeah. seems like she knows her way around a horse. HRO. Yeah. HRO. Uh, Mr. Ernst and Lucy are a thing. Oh, like, I don't think that there's kid romance, but maybe there's some adult romance in this show. All right. Go Mr. Ernst. Yeah. Um, and then I think in the end, someone rides off into the sunset, literally like, yeah, riding a yeah. horse into the sunset that's, for whatever reason. That's a really good one. <laughs> that seems like I feel dumb for not riding it. So <laughs> I just want to see it and be a good shot. Yeah, it would be. Oh uh, man. Okay. <laughs> oh, inter- okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just read I, I scrolled I don't want to I don't I don't look generally before even after I have written all the predictions down I don't look at what the last title okay. for the episodes are yeah until right now when I'm about to say hey listeners <laughs> uh, we'll see you after the final the finale of hey dude and it's called war Ooh, <laughs> things got real on yeah the ranch. yeah it's called war so uh, we'll we'll be back after that And we're back. We're done with the final episode. Not really a finale. <laughs> yeah. But uh, of uh, of a uh, hey dude. It was, it was called war. It, war. it seemed like it was gonna be some sort of like struggle over the ranch or something. Well, just like this show, war it's never ending. <laughs> um, I got a really terrible write up, but it maybe kind of encapsulates the whole thing. It says uh. Okay. It's the new kids versus the veterans in a game of capture the flag. That's what it is. Yeah. Um. So the new kids. Yeah. I mean, this hits us right from the beginning in the theme song. Is that we're watching the credits and there's like two. I think, yeah, just two new cast members that were just like, what, Jake? Who's Jake? There's two <laughs> new cast members that. If you weren't paying attention, you just think Ted looks a little weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, there was a cold open starring Jake, one of the new characters. Yeah. And we both just thought that that was Ted. Yeah, I just <laughs> thought it was Ted. Mm-hmm. So it was Jake was the new, one of the new ones and then Kyle. Kyle. Mm-hmm. And one of those was like uh, Mr. Ernst's like nephew. nephew. Mm-hmm. I don't know which one. I think Jake. Jake. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so that was the team of those two. And then they put Brad. Mm-hmm. She was she's new she, ish, I guess she's new compared to the other three who yeah. were the quote unquote veterans. Mm-hmm. Uh, the veterans obviously consisted of, uh, Ted, who is just as Ted like as he has ever been. It mm-hmm. seems, um, super cool melody. Yeah. And the st- getting cooler by the minute, Danny. <laughs> Yeah. Like our wherever also while we were doing, watching this episode, I was like, I'm gonna do some Danny research. <laughs> Try uh, to find him. Like you said earlier, there's a you know, after like two thousand four or whatever, mm-hmm. people are like, We don't know where he is. Yeah. Some people think he might been might have been a car salesman in uh, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And some people say they still see him come into bars in Tucson. Whoa. <laughs> Man. That's that's a great legend. Yeah, the legend of Joe Torres. That, like, if you go to bars in Tucson, sometimes you'll see him. It makes me kind of want to go to Tucson. 
Oh my gosh. Go to every single bar. <laughs> hey, you guys have a, you guys know Joe Torres? <laughs> I'm looking for Joe. <laughs> yeah, just like every Mexican American dude in Arizona is just like, why? Who are, I've been looking for this guy. <laughs> why do they think I'm him? I don't know. <laughs> uh, he was, he was like great in this episode though. It, I mean, for as much as in the first episode, I said that like Melody and uh, Danny like don't have characters. Mm-hmm. And I said that they're just cool kids. Like this one, they're still just like cool kids, but they're like way more fun. Like, <laughs> yeah, they have stuff like, uh, I don't know. They have stuff that they like, they kind of have, like inside jokes. And there's this whole bit about how um, Danny was talking about this show they used to like as a kid called like, it was like Frank the Magic Shrimp or something, and then yeah. like him and Melody like are reminiscing about the theme song. <laughs> like that's just again like not really a character is not really a personality so much as just a character trait, but like it's still really funny. I really think that their both of their characters <gasps> are essentially they're just fun loving people. Yeah, the the one thing is. <laughs> That, like, uh, part of the fun of Danny is that he's just, like, ragging on Ted, which we all yeah. love to rag on Ted. And, but like, they, like, make comment. Like, Ted makes a comment early in the episode, like, man, Danny, you didn't used to be this mean. Now you're really mean. And Danny's <laughs> just kind of like, what? And then later in the episode, like, Danny makes another joke at Ted's expense. And Brad's like, yeah, Danny, you're, like, mean now. You weren't used to be this mean. <laughs> And Danny's just like, what? What do you mean? I like that. Just ragging on Ted. I like that other people in the show. It's like Danny's going down a dark path, <laughs> yeah. and people are like, "Dude, no, seriously, like, we're gonna have to like stop hanging. We're gonna have to have an intervention." <laughs> like Danny's being mean now. Like Danny, we get it, but like, <laughs> I feel like everything Danny said this whole episode, I was like, "Yeah, Danny, I'm, I'm all aboard, Danny yeah. Train." <laughs> he was funny. Um. And I mean, so yeah, it was just those two teams and they were doing a capture the flag and there was a tournament. I guess it was uh, the smelt, the smelt trophy. The smelt, trophy. smelt was like the former owner of the ranch, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if we had heard about him. And like the stipulation of the game is that the captain of the winning team gets to be senior staff. And so it was obviously Ted was the captain of the red team. And then Brad was the captain of the blue team then because mm-hmm. they, they were acting like Brad was going to, oh, how does it feel to be former senior staff, Ted? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See, Brad was being mean, yep. not Danny. <laughs> um, so, but like the game, the game is capture the flag, but it's like not really like any capture the flag game that I've played. The, the rules are that each team is going to hide their flag overnight. And then by the next morning, like the other team has to retrieve the flag and then run it up the flagpole right and then that team wins and did we ever find where was the, where was the blue team's flag so did, blue, did i like blink when they grabbed it yeah it, it was real quick so red team which is ted's team um they put their flag in the lodge and like their thing was like it's an obvious spot but it's gonna be hard to get they like set up traps for it uh the blue team's thing was like it's going to be hard to find, but once you find it, you're not going to run it up the flagpole. We're still going to win anyway. Mm-hmm. So blue team's flag was like in Ted's jacket. They like hit it in a place they thought he wouldn't look. Oh, they hit, they hit it on Ted. They hit it on Ted. But then when they found it, they pulled it out and it's this blue flag that says Ted is a dork. Yeah. <laughs> Which true. <laughs> Danny probably wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Danny. Danny's like, let's fly this flag. I'm ready. Yeah. He's like, oh, we'll lose, but whatever. <laughs> um, oh, I guess they know they would win. They would win there. <laughs> um, yeah, and so they did that. Uh, the, the other thing is when the so the, when the blue team is trying to get the red team's flag, they mm-hmm. like hoist it up because they had a fourth. They well, Buddy was around. Yeah, he was with the and, blue team, and apparently Buddy was supposed to be, according to Ted, his spy mm-hmm. on the blue team, but Buddy was actually a double agent. Mm-hmm. and was helping them but then they hoisted him up to like try to get the red team's flag all a mission impossible one yeah they like avoid the traps because there's like mouse traps and also bells we forgot about the mr ernst thing right? yeah the other side plot of mm-hmm. mr ernst is now a sleepwalker mm-hmm. and they find out right at the beginning that bells wake him up mm-hmm. so then he gives everybody cowbells which they don't use i think at all yeah not at all 
but the one thing is is that just sets up that the uh, red team's flag has like a net of bells in front of it so that they can't mm-hmm. get to it without ringing the bells, which mm-hmm. would therefore wake Mr. Ernst up and get them in trouble, I guess. Yeah, because Mr. Ernst said, like, no capture the flag. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's dangerous. I mean, they did some dangerous stuff. Yeah, I mean, Buddy got covered in mousetraps. Yeah, right? He could have died from mousetraps. <laughs> that was like, the, that was like, that was the episode. Yeah, I mean, interesting, I mean, interesting strategy, I think, by the red team of just, like, the game is you're going to hide the flag, but they didn't even try to hide it. They just, like, made it really hard to get. Which is an interesting strategy, I think. Um, what would it? What would be your strategy for <coughs> a on the ranch capture the flag overnight scenario? I feel like the rules should be flag has to be hidden in plain sight. Yeah, I, I feel like you can't just one. like bury it in the desert, right? You, right. Yeah. Because <laughs> like you, you may never find it. No. Um. Yeah, make it really inaccessible to get and then have the other team spend a lot of time on trying to strategize to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you like somehow threw it on a roof or something, somewhere that you know like you're not even probably not going to be able to get it again. <laughs> just, um, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, I was like, I could, I could see hiding it somewhere up just as high as possible. And mm-hmm. then it's just like, oh, well, Danny died trying to get your flag last <laughs> yeah. night. So I guess we're all going home. <laughs> So that wouldn't be good. I was trying to find out whether or not, while well, I was asking that, whether or not the the show got like canceled or what was going on. Yeah, I don't really see much. From what I remember of that documentary, it seemed like the vibe they just gave from it was just like we just did this production out in Arizona, and like there came a point where we were just going to make all our shows in um, in Orlando. So that's why. This show stopped and Slew Your Shorts stopped because, like, those are produced elsewhere. And they sort of cut budget there and put their budget towards the Orlando shows. So funny. So while most of the show was technically shot on the property of the Tan K K Verde Guest Ranch, Mm -hmm. the familiar quote-unquote ranch was known to television viewers was actually built from scratch roughly a mile away from the main public area. Mm-hmm. It was done so the ranch guests would not be bothered by the production. Makes sense. Um, and so they could create buildings with more Western look, mm-hmm. which was not offered in the relatively modern and luxurious <laughs> ranch. Uh, so basically everything in the like the, the boys and girls bunks, the guest lodge, which uh, which apparently doubled as a cast casting dressing rooms, and the stable were all built for the production. Mm-hmm. And then after the show ended, the buildings were just like abandoned. Yeah. And just then left it there. I mean, I don't know when this was written, but several are still standing to this day, albeit in much disrepair. Yeah. And then you want to go see if the you're real go- quiet. You can still hear Danny's voice. <laughs> <laughs> I still live here. <laughs> I never disappeared. The reason People why, stop looking for me. The reason why you don't know where I am is because there's no internet out here. <laughs> keep telling people i'm joe torres but people don't believe me uh it's it's funny just because now we I like oh the set is located there's there's actually on the wikipedia there's a there's like coordinates <laughs> like satellite coordinates yeah interesting wow. You can literally drive out there. So now we can go, yeah, if we want to do a first and last field trip, first one ever, go to the mm-hmm. abandoned Hey Dude Ranch. Oh, my gosh. Just film a lot. Not a, I guess not a live episode, but just film an episode from from location. It seems like there's a, a pretty square grid worth of stuff not too far away from it, a.k.a. a, a, a city. Oh, there's towns. Yeah, there's like a Tucson suburb. Yeah, it's it's not too far out <laughs> from a legitimate suburb. So I've really been to Arizona. I don't really know the Southwest. Yeah, well, let's find out. Yeah, just just east of Tucson, not even, not that far out. Okay. Probably a lot of meth there now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only thing I know about the Southwest is what I've seen from Breaking Bad, so I don't <laughs> really know. Uh... It's just like tarantulas and meth. Right, yeah. 
Um, this was good. The best part about the show in my remembrance and watching it today is the theme song still. Yeah. Great That's theme. the best part. <laughs> and now Danny is the second best part. <laughs> and also the legend of Danny. <laughs> yeah. What a mysterious guy. He's just so, gone. So weird. I mean, it's kind of funny because it's like, I don't, I don't know if all the other people did much anyway. Cause if you look at their IMDb is all of their stuff is like known for being on. Hey dude. Yeah. Except for Christine Taylor. That's the only one. Yeah. But the other ones, it seems like they weren't even, I don't know. Maybe the Hey dude experience was bad and they're just like, I don't want to act anymore. I mean, God, could you imagine being in a, like a TV show filming 65 episodes in just the middle of the desert? Yeah. Like that's a, oh. yeah, that sounds not great. It's hot in the apartment we're in right now, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, our studio, <laughs> Yeah. but like our working conditions currently are terrible. <laughs> it's rough times. So I couldn't even imagine doing all of that. But so, I mean, but you know, so yeah, only Christine Taylor thought it was fun. Mm hmm. I liked, I mean, there was a bit that I really enjoyed where um, the blue team is trying to get that flag off of the, like, mantle, and they're, like, doing this thing with Buddy up on a rope and trying to avoid the traps, and Mr. Ernst walks in sleepwalking, and they accidentally wake him up, and mm -hmm. they're, like, he turns around, and he sees all this, like, teenage shenanigans going on, yeah. and he's like, what's going on here? What's the meaning of this? And they're just like, uh... You're asleep. You're sleepwalking. Um, Tricked him. Like, like, I feel like that's just like a classic joke of just like, this is all a dream. Right, guys? Yeah, I think, I, yeah, <laughs> I think I've heard that one before. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't bad. I actually, when that was going on, I, I thought, I thought, oh, man, all these teenagers. I uh, immediately I went, oh, these are teenagers and they must be having a really great time. Yeah. <laughs> then I was like, they're probably all 26. Yeah. Uh, Even like Buddy at this point, like actually kind of looked like almost an adult. Mm -hmm. Only a couple of years later, yeah. With Christine Taylor being the only like actual actress in this, she was the only one I was able to like find a, like a age for. Oh like, yeah, before. how old was she? So like she was born in like 1971, so she would have been like 20. Yeah, well when it aired, yeah. 20. Yeah, when this episode aired, but like you know between the ages of like 18 to 20. And I guess, like, I would assume that the rest of the actors are in and around there. Yeah, probably. So they're just, like, just a little bit older than the age that they're playing. Mm hmm Yeah. So, they, I mean, yeah, I would have had a blast. I guess, so, you know, it probably wasn't the heat that, like, scared them <laughs> off. I'm thinking of a, as a th mid-30s person trying to deal with, mm -hmm. like, sitting around in the heat and acting. I'd have been like, ugh, I don't like that. But as an 18 to 21-year-old, I would have been like, this is freaking great. Yeah, they probably partied pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah being two feet away from tucson yeah i mean like well even just like being out in the desert what else are you gonna do yeah like I'm just gonna have bonfires every night and like do some more meth when they had up <laughs> <laughs> probably not meth play they, with spiders i mean they had a pool <laughs> you know yeah uh, someone's getting thrown in a in a water trench every episode so you can stay cool that way yeah it was like they just like draw straws and whoever was the hottest that episode like got thrown into the, the, the water trench or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, uh, that, that's what I was getting at. If uh, your nostalgia is there, take a peek. It's on Paramount Plus. Watch mm -hmm. some Hey Dude. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not going to rewatch the rest of it probably. Mm -hmm. But uh, I might be humming the Hey Dude theme song in my head for a couple of days. Yeah. Production value definitely went up. Um, it's still, you know, this still is just like a ceiling for this. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a, it's what it was for the time is just like a kid's show to fill in. Like they needed content. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, great kids show. I mean, if you have kids, you should make them watch. Hey dude, it's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty safe content. Like yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, there's probably no need to, you know, vet the show <laughs> and see whether or not it's going to be okay. We did it for you. Your kids can watch. Hey mm -hmm. dude. Pretty much at any age, <laughs> they'll be fine. Yeah, especially if they're just if they're special and they don't they don't want to take a nap. Say <laughs> you don't have to take a nap, but you got to watch Hey Dude. Watch some Hey Dude. And I will tell you this: every single kid in the world will watch Hey Dude instead of taking a nap if given a choice. <laughs> so that's that. Yeah. Uh, should we see how we did for predictions? Sure. I bet we did great. Um, my first one is Ted impresses Brad. 
And I would say that did not happen. There was a peace between them, but I don't I don't think he necessarily impressed. No. I don't think there was like a, wow, Ted, you really showed me. Or like, mm-hmm. huh. So I'm not going to give it myself that. Um, my other one is Danny and Melody are dating. I mean, they're real tight, though. They're you real tell tight. They're like BFFs. So, but completely inconclusive, unfortunately. I think just knowing the Ted or knowing the uh, Danny and uh, Melody characters, they like have an understanding of like, yo, look, like we get along real well. There's obviously some tension here, but like we're coworkers. We can't do this. Maybe they just make out on Thursdays and then, <laughs> you know, they the, then they're fine. Yeah. They, they they're just yeah just have a secret affair that no one else can't, yeah, yeah. no one else at the ranch knows about yeah they everyone thinks like on Thursdays Danny and Melody like play cards together <laughs> and but really they're just like fiercely making out <laughs> um number three Mr Ernst is selling the ranch no no that was my reason for the show to end but they didn't decide to even end the show they just had another episode mm-hmm. um and number four Buddy is either dead or gone. But he was very much there and alive. He's alive. And he's just like part of the crew. Yeah. He was still pretty annoying as Buddy. Mm -hmm. But he was a little bit better as like a kind of a real person Buddy. Yeah. Instead of like this weird little kid. (laughs) Yeah. Instead of someone who just like clearly won a contest or something. Right. Yeah. Um, Speaking of Buddy, I had that he still wears his Mets hat because I think that's part of his identity. Mm -hmm. And he was not. He was just a kid. No. Just another kid he's, in the desert. He's now buddy. He's not kid with hat. Mm-hmm. Um, I would I will say the show could have used more hats. <laughs> Be able to help me tell the difference between Kyle, Jake, and Ted. Yeah. Well, they could have just not cast <laughs> the like same white kid three times. Well, yeah, you know. Well, let's come back to that in, uh, for a second. Just like that, the show already started with like I would say a pretty solid cast of six main characters one of them being an adult and like you know four different looking kids five i guess including buddy that like i think there's a lot you can do there like why did they feel the need to add two more white kids like two more white dudes especially like who looked so much alike yeah they they all not even like a blonde kid and like (laughs) a brunette kid just like same like medium brown haired like ted <laughs> same haircut i think they were all like the same height yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know maybe maybe they were actually odd... the nephews of people that worked for Could the show be. i mean you like think of like the kids that are in like salute your shorts they look absolutely different each and every kid yeah um yeah they couldn't find like a fat white kid yeah like just some <laughs> something so like you turn on the show and you're just like uh, yep that kid yeah, a ginger, maybe? <laughs> Something? Or, like, they, they even had the same character. They're all just, like, kind of dumb. Odd choice. They were Yeah, they were Something, all, like, Ted Light, yeah. if anything. Something was going on there where, like... Maybe they thought Ted was going to leave the show, but then he stuck around or so, something. Uh-oh, Ted's going to go. Let's get two other Teds. Yeah. That was weird. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, my next prediction. Uh, Melody saves a life thinking back to the things that she did is mostly just like being cool and hanging out with uh with danny she got tied up she got tied up because she tried to like she was like done with the game and like wanted to just like yeah have the red team win but um so yeah she didn't really save life um mr ernst and lucy are a thing uh we didn't see lucy she was in the credits yep uh but she wasn't in this episode so no point inconclusive there. um and then the last one someone rides off into the sunset uh and we didn't see we didn't even see when anyone, anyone ride a horse did we even see a horse i don't think we we didn't see a horse we didn't see a guest no yeah <laughs> it's just it must have been like off season or something it's just <laughs> like the kids are just playing capture the flag it was winter in arizona so it was only 85 degrees <laughs> yeah so zero huh yeah zero. Oh well we both did terrible we uh we had Jimmy gone for the week and <laughs> neither one of us capitalized by getting any points. Ooh yeah, we could have made up some ground. Yeah, that's a bummer. Well, we could just add two points to our scores right now. You think you'll listen to it? I feel like we should like make a stipulation that like 
Jimmy, if you come up to us next week and say like pineapple pizza, uh-huh. then we will not add the extra two points. Okay, I'm gonna write it down. Uh, <laughs> if Jimmy says pineapple pizza, yeah, that's Jimmy. If you're listening, that's the magic word, pineapple pizza. Um, you have one week. <laughs> On, no, on the podcast next week. On the pod next week. Yeah, when we record next week. Um, and then, yeah, we he get can, with two He gets a point. Answer. He gets a point? If he says it, he gets a point. Okay. If he doesn't, we get one point each. Okay. I'm into that. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Written. <laughs> I think that's the only fair way to do it. I think this is... Um, I think... There's like a 50-50 chance this pans out. I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, he, hopefully... I feel like he likes to listen when he's gone. He does like to listen when he's gone. But <laughs> maybe, like, this is an hour in. Maybe he gets bored. Yeah, that's true. I mean, maybe he, like, you know, it's like he's got to go do something and he forgets. He doesn't quite get back to it yeah. before we record next week. Maybe he's, like... He does only have, like, a day and a half to listen to this before <laughs> we record. I guess. Maybe he's, like, listening on 1.5 speed and, like, misses it. Pineapple pizza, pineapple pizza. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll find out. All right. Well, hey, that's going to do it for Hey Dude and uh, this week's episode of First and Last. Listeners, if you want to get a hold of us and do a, a, a show suggestion or just to, you know, say things to, to us on the internet, you can. If you know where Danny is or Joe Torres Oh, my Joe God. Torres if is. you know where <laughs> the actor Joe Torres, who played Danny on Hey Dude, is, tweet at us at FNL Podcast. <laughs> Or on the Gmail at FNL Podcast on gmail.com. That would be let's crack this code. We can do it. We can find Joe. <laughs> we can send him a rose and say, You you were good in this show. Thank you. Also, yeah. just continue to live your life. Because we don't <laughs> yeah, carry on. Yeah. Uh, Whatever we, you were doing. I don't want to mess anything up. Yeah. Like if he's if he's doing good, let's let, keep him doing good. But <laughs> you know, we just want to make sure you're okay, Joe. Because mm-hmm. uh that was a good two episodes. <laughs> Also, how's Melody? She's probably chilling. Probably chilling. <laughs> Married to. <laughs> yeah, she, I mean, she had like a full-on career and stuff. So, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, what if he? What if he's alive and he keeps in contact with her and Ben? Still her. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. like their secret best friend. That'd, oh, be, that'd be that'd be awesome. All right, that's it. We're uh, we're we're done. We will see you next week. Jimmy will be back, and it'll be week three of uh, first and last summer camp. And it's Jimmy So, so we'll see what he brings to the proverbial campfire mm-hmm see what i did there all right we'll see ya goodbye All my money's in Bitcoin now. I'll never find it.